Have you ever dreamed of flying in the Alaskan backcountry? Landing a float plane on a picture-perfect lake surrounded by epic mountain scenery? I was fortunate enough to have that opportunity a couple of years back, and this is my recollection of that memory. It began in Los Angeles, where I departed for Anchorage, Alaska, to meet up with my dad and friend Shane. The mission was for us to get our seaplane rating in the tiny town of Moose Pass. After that, we'd go explore some glaciers, rivers, and other natural wonders that this enormous state had to offer. But first, we go to Lake Hood, the biggest seaplane airport in the world, to watch planes. begin to head south towards Moose Pass along the picturesque Seward Highway. We stopped along the way at the Alyeska Ski Resort to take in the awesome mountain scenery and to see some flying of a different sort. The further we went, the more removed from civilization it felt. Primordial rivers and mountain vistas in every direction. And to give you some background, this is me and my dad. He's the one that conceived this whole Alaska seaplane trip. He's a retired airline pilot and I fly small planes for fun. My pilot buddy Shane joined in on the adventure as well. We kept winding our way down the highway until we finally reached our destination of Moose Pass. Population 219. There's not much going on here. A couple of restaurants. The occasional train passing through. Life is a little slower here, but it's home to Alaska float readings. And this is where we're going to learn how to fly float planes. We're training in a 150 horsepower Piper Super Cub. And before you do any flying, you need to learn how to taxi on the water. This here is called an idle taxi. At this low power setting, the entire weight of the float plane is supported by the floats. You use water rudders that are attached to the back of the floats for steering. Water can be very damaging to a propeller, so during this taxi, you always want to keep the stick all the way back. Next up is the high speed or step taxi. To do this, first raise up the water rudders, add full power while keeping the stick all the way back. Once you get up on the step, you can neutralize the stick and reduce your power a little. 
here, the float plane's weight is supported by both hydrodynamic and aerodynamic lift. And if you want to take off, full power, fine tune your attitude until the plane is ready to fly. It definitely takes a few times before you get used to landing your airplane on the water. And after practicing a few normal and glassy water landings, it was time to sit back and watch my dad and Shane give it a go. Taking off and landing on these backcountry lakes is even more fun than it looks. All the locals know why you're there by the stupid grin that never leaves your face. And after a few days of this, we passed our check ride and officially became seaplane pilots. It was now time to go explore this wild and vast wilderness. Every untamed river and every frozen glacier that you come across is a reminder that in Alaska, we are simply nature's guest. Float planes are a vital way for humans to coexist with nature in Alaska. Perhaps more than any other place. And that is what made learning to fly them here a truly remarkable experience.